All right, today is the day, and we are jumping off of Leviathan and Arate projects today, but it is another automotive project. We're actually going to be doing some sculpting of some foam to make some plugs to produce some composite parts. So this video was brought about by my contacting Michael O'Neill of the YouTube channel Wrench, that's R-E-N-N-C-H, and I'll put a link in the end of the description here as well, so you can go see that channel. But Michael is actually restoring an old Porsche and doing a resto mod, actually putting a Subaru engine in that, and he calls it the Blasphemy build for those pure Porsche purists. Pure Porsche purists? Anyway. Those who think that would be a blasphemy to take the Porsche engine out. But anyway, if you're interested in that and you're a Porsche aficionado, you might be interested in going and see in his build. Like I said, I will put a link at the end and in the description to go see his channel. Anyway, he was trying to prepare for SEMA a few months ago and in kind of a crunch. And so I reached out and said, is there anything I can do? And he sent along the back deck lid, the engine cover, and was looking to produce a scoop in that air intake area. So what you're going to see here is just the foam model, the foam mock-up or the foam sculpting to produce a plug to make some carbon fiber parts. Anyway, two little versions in there. You'll see what I'm talking about as we get into this. But anyway, let's not talk anymore. Let's jump in, see how that works. Well, here's the blasphemy of the blasphemy build, a six cylinder Subaru engine. And what we're going to be working on is this cover, this scoop right here over the engine get some fresh air into that engine bay. Now to do this, we're gonna take a piece of uh, old foam I have out in the shed. Looks like it's been pretty filthy from sitting there for so long. There's a four inch thick piece of uh, extruded polystyrene foam that we need to, uh, first off, start carving to fit in that deck lid. And of course that deck lid has a uh, kind of a compound curve arcs in both directions and so we need to uh, carve a piece of foam down to fit down in the notch. Now the original vent that was in here of course built by Porsche was probably stamped out of two pieces of sheet metal and so they can be um, fitting in there but and this carbon fiber part our uh, foam plug would have a terrible bad undercut but that's something we'll have to deal with in another time when we create a mold off of this piece. Anyway we're just gonna shape this thing down and get it um, as close as we can to the shape of the hole. And then we're gonna do, uh, have to uh, carve the center section out of it to get that arc so that it can start to get close to fitting down into the recess that we're gonna be working with. And of course, just uh, that's just taking a lot of sanding, rasping. Get my big block out so we can keep a nice straight edge so we have to have a finish when it goes down in the notch. And then once we Got that thing getting close to fitting in there. We'll just go around and uh, smooth all the corners. And it looks like it's fitting in there nicely about now. So the next thing is we can start working on shaping it to be a scoop. So since we've cut this thing down, thinned it down to fit into the engine panel, the engine cover, we need to add another piece of foam to get to the thickness of being our arched scoop as well. So I've taken another piece of extruded polystyrene foam, and in this case, it's a different color, which is uh, exactly what we want, because we're gonna use that color change to our advantage here. So jumping in here, just getting a rough finish for it, and then I can start fitting it to the other panel. Just take a rasp and uh, blocks of heavy duty 40 grit sandpaper works just as well just start really working that thing down. Now, as I mentioned that we have uh, this transition of colors, we're gonna use that to our advantage because now we can measure and check our dimensions. If we got three inches here, we should have three inches there or whatever our measurement's gonna be, but we can use that transition to do it. Once we got it fitting the way we want, it seems pretty symmetrical, we're gonna bond the two together, mix up some epoxy, thicken it up a little bit and glue these pieces together. Now we don't want the epoxy to actually go to the edge of that joint because if we have to do any sanding to the edge, we don't want to hit the epoxy, which will be a kind of a hard shell and will be a different consistency for sanding. Once it's bonded though, I'm gonna take a gauge and check all the arcs, make sure they're all symmetrical as well. Seem a little bit high in that corner. And then when we get that thing really good, 
measured down accurately, we're going to take some finer sandpaper and just smooth this thing up really nicely. Once we've got it the shape we want, this front edge, we're going to put a little bit of a different transition here. This is going to be the actual intake side of the scoop. Get our angle down, and then we'll uh, sand, rasp that thing down, get that all one smooth surface. Sand it down with some fine sandpaper again, get it real smooth. And then I'm going to take, I've marked it, and I'm taking a razor blade and just going to cut that thing. As long as I can follow that line really nicely and keep my angle right, the razor blade will give me a good smooth surfaced edge as well that I won't have to do too much time in sanding. And that, when we go to create a mold off this thing, will uh, give us a wrap around edge rather than just a cut off edge transition. So once our styrofoam is all ready, we can uh, put a layer of uh, slurry microspheres on epoxy and coat that thing and make it hard. But we're going to change now and do something completely different. We're going to try another different scoop style and we're going to do it a little different method of building that one. Now trying to get that piece of uh, extruded polystyrene foam to fit into this uh, complex shape was a little bit difficult. So we're going to try this time doing some expanding foam. So I put some plastic down as a releasing ply and I'm going to pour some expanding urethane foam in here and just let it fill that up and then it'll conform to the shape and give us that uh, female male mating surface. Now, of course, uh, the low ends that foam kind of roll off and filled off. So we're going to mix a little more, fill that center section. Now it's time to trim it all down and we can pop it out there. And of course, once we take it off of that deck lid, we have a perfect uh, mold of that so it will fit back in. So all that's left now is to take and uh, carve the shape on the top surface since our bottom surface was actually formed by the expanding foam. Now I don't need to explain much of this because it's going to be pretty similar to the other one. The only thing that's different here is this expanding foam is just, in my opinion, just kind of terrible to work with in the fact that it's just gritty and uh, irritating between your fingers. The extruded stuff is much smoother and easier to work with, but it does the job when you need to. The other thing is the expanded foam has a little bit different density from one place to another, and so you have to be a little more careful and use uh, longer sanding blocks and uh, more bodywork type techniques. So once we got that uh, main expanded foam piece uh, carved, I also cut some uh, little scoops out of the expanded polystyrene. And this uh, deck lid, uh, this scoop, I should say, is going to have two intake scoops and one exhaust scoop. So one of the scoops is going to allow heat to escape. And the other two will be bringing fresh air into the scoop. Of course, the two facing forward, the one facing back. So I uh, carved those uh, three scoops. And now I need to cut recesses to be able to put them into the base section also carving down into where the air scoop will travel into. Got all these pieces just about ready to fit to the base, but I'm going to get a nice little round piece of uh, fine sandpaper and do some finish touch up on all the corners and the fine detail, get it all sanded down because once it's in place, it's not as easy to access into those corners. But there it is with all of the recesses ready to accept all the little parts. Now to put them in, I'm going to start with just putting screws through the backside to hold them together. Like I said, this is just a plug, not going to be a part on the car in the end. So we're not worried about having screws in foam or anything like that. This is just temporary bonding to create our, help us create our plug. And here it is with all the parts on. Now it's time to start uh, making those parts transition a little more smoothly. We're going to do that by mixing up some microspheres with some epoxy, create a fairing compound. Go around and I've got these uh, big tongue depressors that I use to mix my epoxy or do this kind of work. I'm going to use that to kind of uh, be our radius gauge too, to slide down between these parts and give us a nice radius that is kind of uh, measured to some extent to the curve of that tongue depressor. Once the sticker uh, fairing compound's on, we're going to mix up little thinner batch and just coat this whole thing to give us a 
slurry to give us a hard shell to be able to sand, get us closer to our finished surface that we want. Once we got the fairing and the slurry covering this thing, we'll give it 24 hours to cure, go hard. But you can see there's still some uh, sagging and waves in it. We need to sand all those down. Now this, uh, the fairing compound, the thicker you make it, the easier it is to sand, a little soft. So we're gonna use that to our advantage. After that was sanded, we found a couple of little low places and transitions we need to fix. So we just mix up some polyester body filler now to go in and try to fill those. Now once we get those done, of course, same thing, just go back sanding, working to finish those. Now this plug needs to be nice and hard so you can do some work on it when preparing for making a mold off of it. So we're going to do one last, or I guess this is the second to the last step. That is put a layer of a, a very conforming twill fabric, fiberglass, uh, some lightweight cloth, conformed very well to all these uh, compound surfaces. And once that's dried, of course, it leaves a fabric texture. So we're going to mix up another batch of epoxy, this time with some calcium carbonate in it, which will harden up very hard, but it'll be our last sanding surface. Now after I sanded that, I threw some uh, black paint on this thing just to kind of get a look at what it's going to be. But Michael decided that he wanted to go to the simpler form. So we're going to go back to our original scoop and uh, put some carbon fiber on it. Now this uh, video is not so much a tutorial or even talking too much about doing a carbon fiber skinning. You can find lots of tutorials online for this and maybe I'll do one myself one day. But this one, just to show you what we did to uh, produce a scoop so he could get his car to SEMA. So we had a good hard shell um, plug. So we're gonna put two layers of carbon fiber on it. First layer, throw some contact cement on there and we can go and uh, take our time by using dry fabric with a little bit of a, like I said, spray contact adhesive. And then we can work our way around, get that first layer of carbon fiber tucked into all the nooks and crannies. The second layer is going to be a finished surface that you're going to be able to see. So we're going to be a lot more careful with this one. We're going to do it in two pieces and then we're going to rotate the second piece 180 degrees so that we have a joint in the center that produces a V or a chevron finish, they would call it. And same thing, just a light spray of contact adhesive to keep these dry fibers in place. And once we got it all nipped and tucked, smooth on there, contacting all the surfaces well. We're just going to put on a couple layers of epoxy. Usually it takes four to five with sanding between it to get a good clean surface for a carbon fiber skinning process. That's what we're going to do here is just to keep putting epoxy on and sand it, but I won't take you through all that. Like I said, you can find tutorials or we'll show you something maybe later on. But that has got us pretty far along and got us a scoop. And we're going to try to get this thing finished, send off to Michael so he can get to SEMA. We have taken you through the process of creating a plug out of foam. You can use that to build bigger, smaller parts, whatever you need to produce for your project. Anyway, I will put a link up right here that will take you over to see Michael O'Neill's channel, Wrench, and see his project. Hope you go over there and give him some love. Show his channel some appreciation for all the work he's been doing over there. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today. Come back and see us again.